1939, Nobel Prize-winning physicist Niels Bohr argued that building an atomic bomb can never be done unless you turn the United States into one huge factory. He was right. Although the Manhattan Project took less than three years to make a working bomb, in that time, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers constructed what amounted to a huge nationwide factory with monumental plants to enrich uranium, three production reactors to make plutonium, and two reprocessing plants to extract plutonium from the reactor fuel. America's functional nuclear weapon capabilities ended the war and would impact international relationships forever. Nuclear weapon production escalated after World War II and into the early 50s. The U.S. and Russia entered an arms race during the Cold War, creating a nuclear weapons complex that included more than 100 sites in 35 states and worldwide. Ranging from miles of isolated desert in Nevada, where weapons were tested, to warehouses in downtown New York that once stored uranium. At the same time, America also began investing in nuclear energy research, creating government-sponsored facilities that generated Nobel Prize-winning scientific discoveries, helped us explore new energy options, and even advanced our understanding of space exploration. Investment in nuclear was growing, but so were our concerns for safety and the environment. And although our stockpile of nuclear warheads would help change the course of history again in 1991, the end of the Cold War signaled the end of America's nuclear weapons production. A new era had begun. 75 years of nuclear weapons production and energy research generated millions of gallons of liquid radioactive waste, millions of cubic meters of solid radioactive wastes, thousands of tons of spent nuclear fuel and special nuclear material, along with huge quantities of contaminated soil and water. At the East Tennessee Technology Park, our main challenge has been that the facilities that we have been dealing with are of massive size. For example, the K-25 facility, which was the main processing building at that site, was the largest building in the world at the time it was constructed. And it was one mile long from one end to the other. The Hanford site produced 74 tons of plutonium. The site is a vast 586 square miles with over 1,700 facilities that have to be remediated. To prepare for and manage this massive cleanup effort, the U.S. Department of Energy established the Office of Environmental Management in 1989. EM's first task was to identify the complete scope and characteristics of the 107 site cleanups. A wide range of risks had to be addressed, including concerns like contaminating soil and groundwater. We had lots of contaminated sites along the river, and our cleanup strategy was to protect the river. And the reason the river is so important is it's the livelihood of the cities within the Tri-Cities, the state of Washington, and also the state of Oregon. So we got to make sure that the river is not contaminated with the legacy of what Hanford left. America's environmental regulations were complex and evolving. And EM had to create the infrastructure, treatment, transportation, and disposal processes to address large quantities of waste. And just like the determined nuclear scientists and technicians who manned these facilities before them, EM delivered on and many times exceeded their goals. Because of the magnitude and complexity of the cleanup, we needed a workforce that was highly skilled, highly trained, and highly experienced. We had to transform that production workforce into more of a scientific study, more engineering and people that understood regulations. All plutonium, uranium, metal and spent fuel is being safely stored at DOE facilities, pending disposition. Thousands of contaminated facilities have been decontaminated and demolished. Over 179,000 containers of true waste were permanently disposed of. And water and soil in 91 of 107 sites across the U.S. have been successfully treated. Now the material from those sites 
has been put into 55 gallon drums and shipped to the waste isolation pilot plant in Carlsbad, New Mexico, which is a half a mile below the surface of the earth. Today, EM and our partners have restored or transferred access to nearly 17,000 acres of land to the American people. Some for public use in the form of parks, historical sites, civic sites, and industrial or office parks. In Washington State, the Hanford B reactor that started our nuclear weapons production back in the 1940s is now a part of the Manhattan Project National Park, along with Oak Ridge and Los Alamos National Laboratory, available to the public for tours. In Oak Ridge, Tennessee, EM has returned nearly 1,300 acres of land, 14 facilities, and most major infrastructure to the community. The site is becoming a multi-use industrial park involving economic development, historic preservation, and conservation. Only 16 sites remain in existing cleanup, but these remaining sites are some of the most difficult to clean up, given unique radioactive waste characteristics. EM's current workforce of more than 20,000 federal workers and contractors include some of the nation's leading environmental scientists and engineers, as well as experts in regulatory compliance and the safe packaging and transport of hazardous materials. This dedicated team applies a wide range of experience and insight to safely and efficiently advance cleanup amid the most challenging conditions. And EM is equally dedicated to addressing the needs and concerns of all our stakeholders, continuously engaging with Congress, tribal nations, communities, local and state regulators, and others on our progress. As it has for 30 years, EM's leadership team will openly discuss our efforts in advancing safe, faster, more cost-effective, and more technically sound approaches to nuclear waste cleanup in support of both human health and the environment. We're getting it done step-by-step and hand-in-hand in, hand in support of America's future. Our priorities are safety first, engagement with our stakeholders, and bringing in the best and brightest people to do the work. When they get up in the morning, they're thinking about their job. When they go home, they're thinking about it. They're thinking about it in the middle of the night, and when they wake up, they're thinking about it. America's nuclear program made a positive, lasting impact on our world and the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Environmental Management is working to keep it that way.